Well, hey gang, this is Crash here from the Crash Cast Podcast. You can check out my show at www.thecrashcast.com. And we are a podcast that uh, covers the RC hobby, both airplanes and unique type things, and eh, sometimes a little bit of helicopter stuff. Uh, we're all about teaching you how to do things on your own. You don't have to buy ARFs and RTFs to, to enjoy this great RC hobby. I'm a builder, and we're going to teach you how to build this stuff yourself. Last year's EQSC for Crash and Scratch Build Club was received very well with airplanes being built all over the world. Lots of them, literally dozens of them. And this year we're going to bring you a multi-rotor design. Uh, I just got into this stuff, just started figuring it out, and I've been so enamored with it, so tickled with it, that it, you know, I thought, well, let's, let's share it with the masses. This thing fully uh, meets my QSC criteria. That's a uh, term that I coined years ago. Q for quick building. Uh, S for simple build methods. And C for cheap, because I'm cheap. <laughs> and this is a very cheap design. Uh, you can go out and buy the Parrot by AR Drones if you want to get into a quadcopter. It's going to set you back about $300. And as cool as it is, it's a toy. This, I've got it eh, somewhere between $225 and $250, and it flies awesome. It's super stable. It'll hover hands off. Anyway, it, it meets the criteria for a Scratch Build Club design, so we're going we're gonna to build this thing. So in just a moment, I'm going to show you the materials that you're going to need. That's our little introduction, and we'll get into um, the materials that you're going to need to build the airframe. Okay, now, for the first few videos here, all we're going to talk about is our QSC Tricopter airframe. We're going to get that built before we do anything else. So we need to discuss the materials that we're going to get to build this. Now, all of this stuff's pretty cheap, and I think $15 for the whole airframe, uh, and that's conservative. It's probably less than that. But the first thing you want to do is you want to get you some 3 quarter inch square dowel. Now, I just picked this up at my local Lowe's Home Improvement Store, three-quarter inch square, I think it's pine, and nice and straight. They only sell 36-inch lengths there. And if you find this material, and that's what you're going to use, and it's only three-quarter inches square, uh, I'm sorry, only 36 inches long, well, then get two sticks. If you can get a 48-inch length, well then 48 inches is going to be just fine. Now if you look here, you can probably see it looks like we've got a knot here. So I've not used this piece. I might cut it down and use little pieces of it. But you want to try to find something that's nice and straight, not twisted, and doesn't have any knots in it. Because that's a weak point. And if you cannot find this at one of your local uh, home improvement stores, your Ace Hardware, your Home Depot, your Lowe's, or anything like that, go to nationalbalsa.com and pick up some 3 quarter inch square basswood. And you can get that in 24, 48, and 36 inch lengths. And I'm just getting 148 at that point. And it's real cheap. So you need to get a 3 quarter inch square wood dowel. Next up we got to talk about we need some 1 8 inch plywood. And there's two options here that I found. Your local hobby shop, if you have a local hobby shop, is going to have this kind of material. Um, I found this top sheet. This is by Ravel Monogram, people that make the plastic models and so forth. Eighth inch thick. This is birch ply, 12 inch by 24 inch. This stuff is only $4 a sheet and works really well. The only problem with it is a little heavier in our airframe. If we use this in our airframe, we're going to add three ounces to our weight. And that's my uh, calculations off the material that I've purchased. Uh, it's good stuff, it's cheap, and it's fairly readily available. So you can do that, or if you want to save some money and some time, you know, you can go to your hobby shop and look for 8 inch light ply. Again, 12 inch by 24 inch. Either way, whichever one of these materials you're going to want to get, uh, they're going to be uh, inexpensive. You need two sheets of them. A good thing about, uh, you know, for the light ply, if you don't have a local source for it, again, nationalbalsa.com. And I think I paid $3.06 for one of these sheets. Again, you're going to need two. The cool thing about light ply, in addition to our weight savings, is that if you do not have a band saw or a scroll saw for, or a jigsaw or any power tools for cutting these parts out, 
this is what you want to use because you can throw down a straight edge and a razor and you can cut it making several five six seven eight passes and you can cut it it cuts real cleanly with a nice sharp razor so anyway get yourself two sheets of eighth inch ply twelve inch by twenty four inch okay we're gonna need some hardware to bolt our arms onto our frame and what I'd recommend what I like just a little 440 by inch and a quarter screw these are the ones I like. You can get them at your hobby shop. Um, you can order them online. I've not had luck getting 440s from my home improvement stores or my Ace Hardware. You may. Anyway, inch and a quarter, 440. If you can't find it, step up to 632. Uh, there's just a weight penalty. Okay, you're going to need some nuts for the back side of those bolts. We have two options here. I recommend the blind nut. Why do I recommend the blind nut? Well, because it stays with a little drop of glue to the outside shoulder. It's going to stay on your bottom frame of your wood, and then you'll be able to back out the screws on the outermost arms, the front outermost screws on the front arms, and pop them out. You'll be able to fold those arms back for a nice compact form factor when you're taking it to the field. It'll fit in your back seat, it'll fit in your car trunk, and it takes up very, very little space because this is not a very big uh, aircraft. If you can't find any blind nuts, well then by all means I would recommend using some of these guys and it's kind of hard to see there but that is a 440 nut. It's an aviation style nut with the nylon locking insert in there. So when you tighten it down it's going to uh, it's going to hold everything nicely and it's not going to want to back out with vibration and so forth. If you use this style of nut then you want to use for uh, your, your number four washers, you're going to want to get 12 of them. If you're going to use this size uh, blind nut, this kind of nut, then you're going to want six of those number four washers. And that basically helps to distribute the load and so forth. Okay, a couple more things here. You're going to need a couple of nylon parts. I bought these at my Ace True Value Hardware. First off, this is a little nylon. Lay it down, hopefully you can see it little nylon shoulder bushing. Inside diameter is roughly a quarter inch. Outside diameter is about five sixteenths of an inch and they cost about 30 cents a piece. This serves as our bearing on our yaw pivot control. This is what I like to use. So much easier, so much simpler than trying to figure out how to nest a bearing in our yaw plate. Uh, get two of those then finally I've got some little quarter inch inside diameter nylon washers you'll want to get three of those and again like 20 cents a piece so you want three of those finally two more pieces to our shopping list we need a quarter inch rod this is aluminum I bought it in a 36 inch length for five dollars ninety nine cents at Lowe's home improvement store and then I cut it down to about four and a half to four and three quarter inch that's really all you need and it's a good inexpensive lightweight solution you can also use music wire, quarter inch music wire, like you might get at a hobby store or you may even be able to find that at your home improvement stores. Um, but anyway, I like the aluminum because it's light and it's easy to cut, easy to work with. Four and, a, four and a half to four and three quarter inch length. And then finally, also I got it at my Ace Hardware. Kind of hard to see there, but we've got just basically a little quarter inch locking collar. Uh, your hobby shop will have these and your Lowe's will have them. Your, uh, I think the Lowe's has them. I know that my Ace Hardware had them. They're, you know, I think they're a couple of dollars. They're expensive, but you only need one. So that concludes the parts that you're going to need for this airframe build. And again, it's all pretty cheap, pretty easy to, to find, pretty easy to source.